I was ready, they didn't have my back. They were petty, I stayed in my back. On that petty, I brought it right back. Back of it. Oh boy, I couldn't wait to share this with y'all and, and post this video, man. Feels good when Donald Trump Blair says we're winning. When Miss Alina Hobbit says we're winning. My beautiful patriots, my beautiful people around the world. I hope everybody is blessed, well, healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life, man. That you had an amazing past weekend. Some time with your loved ones, man. That y'all had a time to relax, enjoy yourself. I know y'all been working hard. We sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's a lot of crazy, evil, corrupt stuff going on, on right now. You know what I'm saying? So we're still fighting, baby, every single day. But we are winning. We're gonna continue to spread the love, the positivity, the good energy because you never know what somebody around the world is going through. And man, I couldn't wait to show you guys her on this uh, PBD podcast and what she had to say. So check this out, you guys. We're winning. Yes, indeed. Tisha James, Judge, Moron. I mean, just, just a disgrace. I mean, unbelievable. Poor New York, man. <laughs> but they say you get what you vote for, huh? <laughs> you get what you vote for. Check this out, you guys. What is the latest with President Trump's case? Obviously, everybody for the longest time was saying Monday, Monday, it's going to happen Monday. 454, four, he's going to have to pay if he doesn't uh, seize his assets. Mm -hmm. You know, the view, I can't wait. I want to see that, you know, seizing his assets and the yeah. property. I want to see all of that stuff. What is the latest? What's been happening? So we're winning. And I've always tell people, you know, this is the long game. Okay. We are in a corrupt system. There's no question about it. So people love to say, look, he's going to get, we're going to go over there and Tish James is going to take the keys to Trump Tower. I think uh, Whoopi Goldberg or, and all of them got excited about putting a chain around Trump Tower. And Who watches The View in 2024? Be honest. Plead the fifth. Be honest now. I don't see anybody raising their hands or I don't hear anybody say, yeah. So I'm guessing that's a no. Nobody watches The View in 2024. I mean, you guys, I'm not, like, I'm not gonna hit the sirens this video, y'all. We not gonna hit the sirens, okay? We did. Literally, we're, we're taunting. Um, it was a really pathetic sight, actually. And uh, it didn't happen. Why? Because the appellate division read our papers, saw that there are reasons for a stay, saw that it absolutely is ridiculous to have somebody lose an asset while the appellate division hasn't had an opportunity to look at the injustices, look at the decision making that was so flawed. And frankly, the motivation on this case was flawed. She was motivated to bring this case before she was even in office. That's what she ran on, Miss James. So <clears throat> that in itself, selective prosecution happens to be illegal. It shouldn't happen. Um, Look, they stated, they dropped it. They said, we're not taking assets. Everything is frozen. Not only, and this is the one thing that nobody talks about. They didn't just say you're not paying that amount of money, which by the way, is almost close to a billion dollars with a bond because you have to pay 10% more. Plus you have to pay interest. The judges said, no, we're stopping everything. You're not enforcing this. You're going to put 175 mil, which is still crazy, in a bank. But we're also not enforcing any decision against the defendants not to be able to work in New York in real estate. We're also not enforcing the decisions against Alan Weisselberg, Jeff McCarthy, people that did nothing wrong, that were working for a company and did their job and truly did nothing wrong. Nobody did. Um, and every single part of that decision from Judge and Gorin, that twisted weird decision. Weird looking guy. He, <laughs> every single thing was put on hold. Everything. <laughs> While we have the opportunity now to say, this is what I was screaming about outside the courtroom steps every day, you know? So we're on hold and, and I mean, we're on hold for an expensive price, but at least- Weird looking guy, weird looking fella. Weird, bimbo, that wasn't weird looking fella, ain't it? <laughs> at least we're seeing a little bit of, you know, due process and, and sense. Uh, and how did you come up with the 175 million? I don't know. Um, I, ha I have no idea. You know, it wasn't in there. There wasn't any- qualification but or, Alina are, are they starting to figure out that this tactic that they're using is not it's like it's done it's I not going to work we could have call it? the DNC and ask them I'm yeah. not sure yeah. you know I, I don't understand how they couldn't see that their overreaching has really hurt them because 
Donald Trump has always been famous. He has always been a very smart businessman, which is why I think he's a very good president. He attacks things from a business perspective, which I think some presidents and some politicians, frankly, do lack mm. that that experience, right? Um, and because of that, they've attacked him so badly that now you've taken a billionaire and made him sympathetic because you're hurt. You're trying to hurt him. It's so obvious that now we've got people from the left, the middles. They're coming to our side and saying, mm -hmm. whoa, this is just too much. Yeah. You know, they're going to do this to me. Exactly. What am I going to do? I don't have Haba outside screaming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? And that's been my message always is, um, you know, they're doing it to him, but they'll do it to us. They'll do it to me. I'm sure they'll do it to everybody. And that's what scares me. So that's that's really it's the motivation is really not just President Trump. It's America. So let me ask you this. So this 175 mm -hmm. we're talking about. OK, it has to be in an account. Fine. He yeah. gets puts that cash. No problem. If if we size up the enemy of President Trump as being deceptive, dark, divisive, uh, willing to do anything to eliminate him as a candidate going into 2024, November 5th, anything they can do, right, to spin the story and say, look at him now, he's part of the establishment, he's going to New York begging people for money, Wall Street, all this stuff. If if that was the case, he's still got a few more uh, cases open. I, is it is it possible that they may come up and say, yeah, for this one you have to pay $280 million, this one's going to be $73 million, another $128 million, another hundred and ninety. million. Can they keep doing this between now and October to just really deplete all of his savings? So, <laughs> look, the reality is he's an incredibly wealthy man. Um, he His wealth, like all wealthy individuals that have intelligence, is being put to work. It's in buildings. It's in real estate. It's in hotels. It's in golf. Um, they're not, you know, whatever they're going to try and do, they forget who they're dealing with, number one. But realistically, Patrick, w what we do have in front of us is really not the civil suits. The civil suits uh, were already done. And if if you what you're asking, I believe already happened. We had mm. the Carroll lawsuit. He got hit with an insane. And that, and that was a suit that I obviously mm. did. Um, we had already lost <clears throat> prior and. We have not been heard on appeal on that first loss. This is the 83.3 million. 83.3 million. Right. That was the first one. Right. Which actually turns out to be 91 million when you look at it with the bond, okay, with the 10%. You have to put 10% on top. People think you put 10% into the court. Decrease. You put the entire yeah. amount plus 10% into the appellate division. So it's a number that the court gives plus 10%, <clears> plus <throat> the interest on the bond, plus whatever they get in fees. It's plus, plus, plus. So we already got that hit. I did that trial two weeks after uh, Letitia James' trial ended. I was on that trial for four months. The, Judge and Gorin waited to put his decision until after the jury came out with Carol. So we had that happen. We had that happen. It was 91 million. And then Tish James, her original complaint, if you look, was $250 million. In the middle of the trial, towards the end, she changes it. And says, now I want more. Not because the facts were bad. Frankly, the facts were good. Deutsche Bank came, took the stand, said he was a whale of the client. We actually wanted him because we wanted his connections. Zurich still insures us. You know, all these things. The judge didn't care. Tish asked for more. He gave exactly what she wanted. There was no consideration for witnesses or facts oh. or law. It's all crazy and How corrupt. How did come up with these So numbers? it was 91, then 375. They're out of thin air. Their <clears> own <throat> expert said, even if we looked at the, what this judge is saying is an overvalue. Okay. He's also saying Marilago is 18 million. Yeah. Okay. So sure. If you think Marilago is worth 18 million, well, there's about a, over a billion dollars of, of over. It's ridiculous. There is no way. If Marilago is <clears throat> 18 million, we should all buy it tomorrow mm -hmm. and flip it. And yeah. we'll, all be, we'll all be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it's crazy. But if you look at it that way, yeah, that was already planned, Patrick. That's what they did. They did 91. Yeah. Then they did 375. 375 becomes more like 600 million. So they were trying to take it. By the way, remember, Tish asked for his statements, asked for financials. She changed the number based on what cash he had. It's just, it's, there's 0% question in my mind. That's what happened. So, so Lena, if you ask that, like the average person that doesn't know about law, doesn't know about all this, yeah. and they're looking at this from the outside, looking in, even left or right, and they're saying to themselves, how the hell are they getting away with this 
and nobody saying anything in, in the legal world and government and Congress. Yeah. So, somebody should be like, all right, guys, time out. Besides, I don't care what the hell, who the person is. What are you guys doing? This is blatantly obvious that it's a tactic to try to take, like, keep them off the ballot. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But I think that I think that we have a problem with accountability with the Democrat side. And I'm not sure we figured out how to tackle them. We have to. I think President Trump. Um, would make everything even Steven when he gets back into office. I think that what we have to deal with is exactly that. We've got, we could keep talking about it. I could go on TV every day and talk about how we have White House logs that came out while I was on trial. I'm sitting in the back room and I find out that there were White House logs that Tish James visited the White House. Yeah. Before <laughs> and after the complaint was filed. What? How was that not on the news? If I didn't have such a loud mouth, People wouldn't hear the truth. So so I'm looking at it and I'm going, what? How is this possible? And it didn't get covered. It didn't get covered. I mean, Who, is that public go. info fight right now? Wanted to find out that she's yeah. visited the White House. Yeah. That, that's public. I could see Yeah. It. Yeah. It's crazy. So I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how do we hold them accountable? Well, these are elected officials. You know, we had people there. We have gag orders being put on us. How is that OK? Yeah. Gag I'm orders on lawyers. Yeah. Imagine I go to court. I'm your lawyer. And, you and the talk. judge says, but no, no, you can't talk about a couple things here. What? How about the Carroll case? The judge asked me the questions I was going to ask my client in public, in front of the media, before he took the stand, and then asked me what his answers would be. I was like, excuse me? Nobody talks about it. Yeah, Transcript. Is, ask for the trans. It's there. It's crazy. Yeah, this mm. is judicial activism as, at its worst. Judicial activism is where the judge is sort of acting as a lobbyist on behalf right. of a political side. And in civil cases, it can run amok as long as you get a dirty judge. At least at the federal level, you know, you have federal sentencing guidelines, right? Which right. was you, that, that a sentence will be this much, might be this much, and can be extended to this much on the circumstances. Yeah, that statutory. That, that, that the, uh, you know, that the, 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 the basically the AGs, first states or whatever that are participating and remand things like to the Southern District of New York for business and it looks terrible and they say, okay, well then your guidelines here, but you're going to get this. But for civil, Vinny, civil it can run a mud. All you need is a bad, dirty judge. He puts a gag order here. He impugns a witness here. He prevents us here. He suppresses us here. And you're literally a puppet and you feel like you're in the middle of Congress during a debate literally. for a yeah. bill rather than in the halls of justice with rules and regulations. We're, we are supposed to have, you know, the executive, the judicial, and then legislative. Legislative is where we run amok until we figure it out. Judicial, we're supposed to have procedures and laws and standards and things that go in there. This didn't happen. They basically decided that the civil case, they were going to run it like a political campaign. And for everybody listening, that's what you should think about here. Mm. That, that the Trump cases were run like a political campaign by a filthy, corrupt judicial. Yeah, that's they happened. are politically motivated. And there were things that were done that I know were meant to make me look stupid and you know uh judges admonishing me telling me to sit down in front of a jury um the way they spoke there was nothing i was doing procedurally or in evidence rules that was wrong now the press covered it that way because the judge made them think and would say things like you should read the evidence rules and i'm looking and i'm saying well i'm trying to be an ethical lawyer here and respectful um but I can't, I, you, you can't really talk back to a judge, right? Especially yeah. when a judge is telling you they're going to throw you in jail, um, which happened on the Carroll case. Imagine in a civil case, because I objected mm -hmm. to a PowerPoint slide that I wanted in, and he said is not coming in. The PowerPoint slide literally proved everything I had said in the case. It said that, look, if somebody tweets something and President Trump doesn't acknowledge it for five hours, but they're getting hate from trolls, how can you blame President Trump for defamation? That slide was taken out. I was not allowed to bring it in. And the jury couldn't see it. But the judge, the way they do it, he did it in front of the press. He didn't do it in chambers. He does it so that people start to have this narrative. Oh, she's not a good lawyer. Oh, she's not bright. Oh, she's not this and that. Is that the, the judge said he's going to throw you in jail? Yeah. Yeah, that, the, the weird guy. But, so question. Yeah, the weird was, guy. Did you guys file any motions against Letitia James for all the, all the videos and all the rhetoric of, I'm going to go after Trump? I, how is that not a conf conflict of interest to get yeah, her taken off the case? So, so her being on the case is different. Excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. Oh, uh, and when he says, "Yeah, the weird guy. Yeah, the weird guy." 
Oh, man, he cracks me up, man. Different than Fannie Willis. Okay. So Tish James actually doesn't do the cases. Okay. She's a figurehead effectively, right? So she's got a team that we dealt with for three years, and that team tried the case. She would show up. She would sit in the back. She would have her coffee. She wasn't really trying the case. Now, she was giving the directives. She was given the directives, much like Merrick Garland or course, any of them, right? Yeah. But does, did we argue selective prosecution a hundred times? Did we argue that she persecuted, prosecuted President Trump to get into office, said it before, that it was improper, that she was unethical, all those things? A hundred times. Was it covered? No. Just like her, at the, just like her going to the White House to visit. The, I, I, what I want to ask is how they come up with these numbers. And we'll I get can to no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat, a potential Tulsi oh, Gabbard VP. And where we are being told that we just have to comply. We just did a VP video, y'all. I'm going to leave it right here somewhere around the screen. Y'all can go check it out, man. Oh, man. This thing is getting very, very spicy. But comment down below how you guys feel. We're wishing the best in all you guys' life. Do not be afraid to reach out to me, email me. Um, again, we're going to be a blessing to tons of you guys, a part of this beautiful family. Um, until, it's that, until it's that time, man, we encourage everybody to go out and vote. And, hey, spread that love in 2024 and more years down to come. You never know what somebody's going through, so please spread the love. And I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Peace and love, you guys. Beautiful Patriots. Thank y'all for making it to the end of the video. And again, man, we do all this coverage on my OK Life channel as well. Daily updates, new information. We even go back and check out the old things. You know, that has been such a blessing, just like this video you just witnessed. So thank y'all for stopping by, tuning in. God bless you all and your families. And I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.